What's happening, Red and White community? This is Adi from Gate7 International bringing you yet another deep dive, this time for Sergi Canos Tenes, the winger slash wingback. We are bringing him as a winger from Brentford. He is coming in on loan. Disappointing to a lot of you, I know, but that's the deal. He is coming in for a six-month loan, and Brentford has an option still in their contract with him to renew him for one more year. If they renew him, we will be forced to pay for him if we wanted to keep him on, and if they don't, we would be able to secure his services for free after that. Very excited for this player, and we are going to get into this discussion and analysis shortly, but before we do that, guys, if you haven't done so already, like and subscribe. The community is growing We're in the new year here. We're coming towards the end of January. Well, sorry, it is the end of January. It is now February, and the audience is growing. The Red White community is growing around us. Help us continue to grow this. Help us continue to grow the project and spread the love of Alibiakos and the Red White community all over the world. Big shout out to the newly formed Gate 7 Seoul, Korea. Love seeing it. Alibiakos is everywhere. We are around the world, as is the Gate 7 International community. So, so happy to see everybody popping up. Alibiakos fans all over the world. And lastly, a quick word from our sponsor. For those of you betting guys, we have Champions League, Europa League, Conference League coming up. We are going to be hitting you with the betting lines. Use our promo code GATE7INTL. That's GATE7INTL in all capitals at betus.com.pa for a 125% deposit match when you sign up and make your first deposit with BetUS. Just visit the site, betus.com.pa, and you'll get your 125% deposit match when you set up there. The lines are great. Ask everybody that we that has talked to you about it. Costa has brought it up. We have compared their their wagers, their lines to other services, especially in Europe. They are very aggressive. They are very competitive. And I think you guys would like it as much as I did, at least. I had a lot of fun doing it for the World Cup. Well, without further ado, I would like to bring you guys the Sergi Canos deep dive. Sergi Canos Tenes is his full name. And we are really excited to have this player with us. As of the time of recording, he has been announced by the club. Uh, those of you that saw me on the live before recording this, we talked a little bit about him. So I hope you're as excited as we are. He is a 25-year-old Spanish winger. He actually is going to be turning 26. By the time you guys see this deep dive, it'll probably be the 1st of February. So he'll be turning 26 on the 2nd. So birthday coming up right after he's signing with us. As I mentioned, he's a Spanish winger. He did make quite a few appearances, not only on the left wing, but as a right wing back and a left wing back for Brentford in the past few seasons. All stuff we're going to get into momentarily. Uh, Stature is is decent. Uh, He's not the tallest guy in the world. He's not the shortest guy in the world. 5'10", 177 centimeters, weighing in at 75 kilos, 165 pounds. Uh, Pretty solid build. Not not overly muscular, but not too lean either. It's, It's a good build. Very good build for a winger. And as I mentioned before, he's played kind of all over the place. Uh, and he's done very well uh, wherever he's played, which is is promising. During the promotion, the promotion season, that season that Dan had mentioned, if you guys listened to the interview that Costa and Costa did, which I highly recommend you listen from Sky Sports, a uh, very good interview. He gave us a lot of great insights. And during that promotion run, he actually played a lot of left wing for them. Uh, he played a lot of left wing back. And then their first season, Brighton, or sorry, Brentford's, first season in the Premier League, he played a lot of right wing back. So he's kind of played all over the place. He definitely has a preference for playing the right wing position. Uh, That is his natural position. But wherever you put this guy, he will perform. He will give it 110% every time he's on the ball. Uh, Profile of the player, he is one of those close control dribblers. Uh, no nonsense. You're not going to see too many step overs with this guy. Not a lot of fancy tricks. Uh, he will use feints here and there, some missteps, uses speed. Uh, he has decent agility as well. He can change directions quite well. And with pace, uh, his acceleration after the change of direction is admirable too. So, uh, he can beat defenders with his speed, not to mention he's also pretty physical. I mean, spending all that time in the championship, you, you would figure that he would get used to that. So he's definitely up for some of these physical challenges. Upside downfield with the ball, 
he does take some risks, something that I'm going to get into, especially when he's sitting deeper. Uh, in the final third, he tends to play what's in front of him or pass with what's in front of him. Uh, I don't want you guys to be alarmed. You're going to see that his pass accuracy is not really uh, anything too amazing, but there's context for that, so we're going to touch on that. Um, Build-up-wise, he's not the most important figure when it comes to build-up, so uh, he's definitely more of an outlet guy, somebody that's going to help us progress the ball forward, be an outlet for our guys that are playing the ball throughout the mid, and he can link up very well, one-two touch. Plays with a ton of passion. I know, again, in the interview, Dan had mentioned to Costa that this guy has a, a ton of passion, and he, he gives everything on the field. He really does, man. He never, ever stops running. Ever. And you love to see that. Uh, the guys said it reminded them when they were discussing in the interview, it reminded them of, of David Fuster, and, and I can see that in the tape. I can see that. You can see it. He wears his heart on the sleeve when he's out on the field. And you got to have it. He's a real fighter. He definitely is. And we need, we we really need players like this on this team. We didn't have enough of this starting the season out. And it seems that with the transfers we're making in the winter, we're trying to bring more of these fighters into the team. Well, let's get started, everyone, and have a look at um, some statistics that I've prepared for you guys. Now, I'm going to be changing it up a little bit here. I'm not going to jump right into the player comparisons yet. I'm actually going to start off with some percentile data. So we're going to look at last season, and we're going to see how he did in the Premier League compared to his peers. Now, in this case, for this data set, I'm going to take the most recent one. because He was playing primarily as a fullback, a wingback, we should say. And we're going to compare him to all the other fullbacks in England just to give us an, an idea that even out of position, how was he doing against his peers who were playing in their natural position? And it looks pretty good. I'm going to tell you guys, goal threat-wise, I saw even, even as a wingback, really, really great, great positioning and very adequate goal threat. Not afraid to take a shot, whether it's from distance, he'll crash the goal. As a wingback, this guy is crashing the goal, getting in the box. Not something we've seen from a lot of our fullbacks at Olympiacos. He even fights for these scrappy goals. We haven't seen a lot of guys get really scrappy outside of some forwards here and there in a very long time. Breath, breath of fresh air in that regard. In the air, he's not remarkable, so I, I wouldn't count on seeing a lot of these air battles or you know him winning crosses or free kicks in the air. Not too many situations with that, but even without that, his, his goal threat is coming from really diverse sets of opportunities here, whether it's in the air, whether it's at, from distance, uh, on a volley, balls being played in, him dribbling in. I mean, all these different goal opportunities were coming from so many different uh, situations, which is unusual. I can't think of another deep dive I've done where I've seen a player score from so many different positions. It was incredible. Uh, I, I, again, the, the, I want to add on top of not just the diversity of situations, but his accuracy with shot placement in all of these situations. He seems to be able to pick corners very well. And you see that in a lot of these finishes, he's picking near corner, far corner, and he does it enough to where it's definitely not, it can't be, it can't be just chance. It can't be luck. This guy is doing this. Uh, he is intentionally doing this and he's, more than capable of replicating this over and over again. Assist creation also came from a lot of different scenarios and situations, whether it was crosses, him linking up at interplay, playing these one-twos, moving in and out of the box to free himself up for a shot or play a pass to somebody that could take a shot. Uh, balls played across the goal mouth, outside of the box. Uh, didn't matter. Didn't matter. He would even... Uh, drive at some defenders to draw a guy to him and lay it off to somebody for a shot too. Many different situations. Uh, with not a one trick pony by by any means. I mean, this guy, this guy seriously has a very very wide toolkit with which he can score goals from. And we can take a look if you look at the bottom of the table here. This is where the goal creation statistics are broken down into percentile data for goals, non penalty goals. That is xG shot creations, shots, assists, and look at this. I mean, goals, XG, shot creations, he's in the, whether it's the 90th percentile or above for everything compared to all other fullbacks. It's incredible. 
uh, assists and uh, assists. He's over the 50th percentile. XA is a little bit lower. Same thing with overall shot creations. Uh, now, this data is coming from FB Ref. It's a, it's a data source I love to use for the top three leagues. Uh, it includes a little some things that Scout does, and I also believe that the data is a little bit better uh, for those top leagues as well, which is why I'm using it in, in this case. We will get into Scout later uh, for the player comparisons, but I wanted to show you guys this percentile data uh, to see where he where he measures up with his peers. And as a wing back, which is where he played for all but a couple of games in not this past season, but the previous season, he's up there in, in above the 90th percentile for most of these items. Uh, when it comes to his total uh, non-penalty uh, XGSXA, you can see he's in close to the 80th percentile. Shot creations, it's it is a little bit lower. Uh, shot creations not only includes shot assists and shot actions, but also if you get fouled and generate shot actions from there. So in that, we see that maybe he's a little lower compared to others, but other th for the most part, the end product uh, for him was incredible, uh, especially this is, a, again, compared to players in the Premier League. So uh, I think we're getting a really good option here at the very least, even just from the sample of him playing as a wingback. Now, regarding his passing and build-up characteristics, the guy I mentioned briefly in the profile, he's a direct dribbler. I didn't see a lot of crazy fancy footwork, but he has some decent pace, which he decent pace physicality, which he's going to use to his advantage. Uh, you'll see him change direction pretty effectively, and if he catches somebody flat-footed, that's really where he can make up a lot of space, not easily pushed off the ball. And he may not have a diverse toolkit, but he's pretty good at what he does. I mean, the last couple seasons, almost 60% dribble success. Uh, very least, it's usually in the mid 50s. Uh, he he will make these moves uh, with, again, using his agility, trying to keep space. When I say he's physical, I don't want you guys to think that this is a guy that, okay, he's going to get in. He wants to get rough and tough with some people and, and, and dart off. No, that's not the case at all. He does not, he's not a guy that's eager to get in those physical tussles. It's more like if it happens and somebody tries to get close, try to put hands on him. He's not shying away from that. He's not going to fall. Usually he's going to fight back, which is, which is great. He's got that fighter's mentality. No surprise. We brought that up before everyone's been talking about it and years in the championship has probably molded him to that point. So again, something that uh, you really love to see. Uh, where he does lose the ball, it's not usually dribbling unless he's off balance or maybe somebody's pressuring him and he hasn't controlled the ball and he loses it there. We see that he's more likely to lose the ball with, with some passes downfield. And this is where I'm going to refer to his, his pass accuracy. Some of you have probably been not listening to a thing I said as we got to the build-up section, and you've probably been looking at his pass accuracy and, and uh, uh, pass attempts where he's well below the 10th percentile uh, in both of those aspects. And this guy isn't like an amateur and just giving balls away because he's terrible. That's not the case at all. He takes a lot of risks. Uh, yeah, he, he's not passing the ball as much. He's usually on the ball a little bit more, moving around. Um, and that's been the situations where, uh, when he was playing in a wing back, especially when he was at a back five, that's pretty much what his only role was. So with that context, it's understandable to see such low volume in terms of his pass volume. And, uh, as far as his pass accuracy goes, it is, I'm not going to lie guys. It is a little bit lower than you'd like to see. You don't want to see somebody that is uh, below 60% pass accuracy. That's usually when I tell you guys to start panicking, uh, when you're in the sixties below fifties, but yeah, it's, it's something that we're going to monitor. It's not something we're going to freak out with because when you watch the guy, the guy does take risks. And when you see somebody taking risks, okay. Uh, you're more likely to allow for that. We do want to see that get a little bit higher, though. We don't want to see him giving the ball away that much, even when he's taking a lot of risks. But again, the the context with what we're seeing from him, I don't think it's necessarily uh, something that is oh, so negative to where we can be worried that he's going to be a bad player for us. Looking at some of the other things, again, if you look at the other stats around him, he's well above the average in in almost everything dribbles completed like i said before his dribbling at his his dribbling success is is pretty good uh even if the volume maybe isn't as high as as other wingers are forget the wingbacks uh as regarding wingbacks his 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 dribble success volume is in well over the 80th percentile or sorry around the 80th percentile which is pretty good uh 
solid amount of touches in the penalty area, progressive passes. Uh, all of this is very good. And again, remember, guys, he is playing out of position at the wing back, and we are seeing some very, very solid production, not just end product from him in the final third, but build up, getting to the final third. All great signs pointing to somebody that is a normal, a natural right winger, but has been playing out of position and doing it very effectively. You like to see this from players. This is a player with really good mentality. He's being played out of position. He doesn't complain about it. Well, maybe he did complain about it. They did bring that up in the interview uh, with Costa and Costa and the journalist from Sky Sports, but he put his head down and he worked. And that's what you want to see. You want a guy that's going to give you 110% no matter where you play him. That was what David Fuster did for us no matter where he played. And that's what it, we we need. We need that from our fighters, just like Jose Holebas had mentioned to us in his interview. Uh, uh, again, he's I, – I brought this up before. He's not a key figure in buildup, and that shouldn't surprise you with his low volume, uh, with passes and and, and buildup, and that's not something again that we're going to worry too much about because we need an outlet. He is a and he is a great outlet. He's going to get forward with the ball uh, as especially as a wing back. He did it, so there's no reason to believe he wouldn't do it as a winger. He does do it as a winger. We'll get into that shortly when we look at other player comparisons, but. Uh, over, consistent overlapping, cutting inward when he is a winger with the ball, moving into space, uh, and and being able to play as that outlet for people. That's something that creates space for our other players, our tens when they're playing, something that we see they don't have because they don't have other wingers or players to give them width to help create and establish that, to give them that space. And that's what he's going to do for us in this respect. Uh, the last thing we're going to go over before we start looking at the player comparison are his defensive traits. The the really important thing here is that he is always running. He loves to pressure the ball. He's great in the press, very aggressive when closing down defenders. This is where his value proposition is. We're not really looking at a player here that is the best, maybe we'll say, at reading passes. Uh, it's really the effort level off the ball running at people that we that we care about here and in this center section that you see this is where uh we have a lot of his defensive data um again this is compared to other wing backs he was blocking a lot of shots making a lot of tackles very aggressive you didn't see a lot in the air i mentioned before he's not the best player getting in the air. That's not why we're getting him. So I'm not super worried about that. E even again, with regards to the interceptions being a little bit low, he is not maybe so good at reading the plays, but all I care about is his effort level. This guy is going to run all over the place and he'll be the one making the challenge to create the mistake by the, pl by a player that's playing the ball so that one of his teammates can then clean the whole thing up. So he, this is the role that he's going to play. And we need somebody that's going to be able to do that, especially under a Michel scheme where he likes to press very high. So he is going to be a very important player in this pressing scheme for Michel on the defensive aspect of things. Well, now that you guys have seen where he squares up when he plays as a wing back out of position, we're going to wind the clock back another year in Brentford's campaign that saw them get promoted to the Premier League, where he was playing as a winger for the most part. Still out of position, he played as a left wing, even as a left wing back, but he was playing as a winger higher up the pitch. And we're going to use that, and we are going to compare it to our other two wingers. Uh, we are going to compare it to the likes of Gary Rodriguez and Yorgos Masuras, uh, both players that unfortunately have not really done as well for us this season as we would have liked. So we're going to compare him when he played as a winger in that season where he had nine goals, 10 assists for Brentford in their championship promotion run, uh, again, compared to Yorgos Masuras and, and Gary Rodriguez. So here we go. We have the same goal creation statistics, pairing them side by side with Masuras and Gary. And you're going to notice some of the values are different. Uh, yes, of course, because it's a different season, but also this is including all competitions, all competitive competitions, not friendlies, and club competitions only, of course, not just league play, which is what you saw in the previous chart. This is all from Y Scout, and this is for the comparison. So we're looking at his, his goal production, and higher than Masuras, 
Not so much uh, with Gary. You're going to see Sergi is that really dark, bold red color, while Masuras and Gary are some of the lighter colors. Uh, in terms of his XG, he's going to be, again, a little bit lower uh, than the others. Overall shot volume is higher than both. Assist volume higher than both. Um, uh, expected assists in between. Uh, shot contributions. He's beating out both of them almost by 50%. It's it's really something. Or sorry, I should say almost double in, in the case of Masuras. Crossing volume, again, higher than Masuras, but less than Gary. But I want to point out the caveat here. And there's a huge one. The caveat here is Gary Rodriguez has a lot of volume with crosses, but his crossing accuracy is garbage. I don't know how I never caught this before, but Gary Rodriguez has somehow found a way to beat out Oleg for worst crossing we've seen from a player at Lubiakos in a, in a span of time. Oleg, I remember it, we, we, he had a record at one point. He was like one in 20 crosses, uh, not this past summer, but the previous summer, something we used to laugh about. Gary Rodriguez right now has only completed three of 50 crosses. That is horrifying. That is a really, really, really awful statistic. So uh, apologies, Oleg, uh, for maybe some of the previous banter you got because you did find somebody that is a lot worse than you in that regard. So in this case, Gary Rodriguez may have more volume in crossing, but he doesn't hit targets. In the case of, of Sergi Canos, he is hitting targets and his volume is still pretty adequate at almost four crosses per 90 minutes. So again, here he is as a winger and he's playing for a team that maybe isn't dominating possession as much as Lubiakos. He's not on the ball as much as these guys are. And yet here he is having very equitable and in some cases better end product than the than our current wingers. Looking at his build-up metrics, uh, we brought up before that he's not getting a lot of touches on the ball, uh, or maybe it was a little bit less than his peers. Well, take a look at his volume compared to Gary Amasuras. You'll notice here, uh, in terms of pass attempts, again, it's still pretty low. And compared to other wingers in the Premier in the Championship, I'm sorry, at this time in 2020, 2021, when he was in that uh, promotion run, it's still pretty low. But he's not super involved in built up again. He's an outlet, so he's receiving balls a lot. He's the one that's getting into the final third, carrying the ball forward. But look at this. From two guys that play for a team that possesses the ball, especially right now, a lot more than the other teams, Gary Rodriguez and Yorgos Masuras are not on the ball a lot. Very similar touch volumes. Now, the pass accuracy thing, I'm not going to touch on this too much again because I talked about it in the – uh, for the percentile data. Yeah, his isn't as good, and uh, he does take a lot of risk. We hope that it improves, but um, uh, we're going to hope that that's something that's not going to bite us going forward. But, you know, you see when he's a winger, it's a lot higher than 58%. Here we're closer to 70%, which is where I'm not panicking too much either way. The progressive carries, yeah. or sorry, progressive passes here, progressive carries, this is huge. Uh, as I mentioned before, said he gets forward a lot. He takes the ball forward a lot. And as a winger, he is going to continue to do that. And this is what we need. We need this really progressive action from our wingers to get us forward to establish width. And he does that in spades for a team that doesn't possess as much as Olympiacos or didn't possess as much as Olympiacos. He's doing almost double or triple the volume than Gary and Masuras. Uh, again, dribbles completed. No surprise that he's much higher than Masuras in that respect. Uh, I mean, he's beaten out Masuras in most of these categories, which shouldn't surprise any of us. Uh, Gary is is closer, uh, but Gary has a huge problem with his end product. As we've seen, he's missing a lot of things, and he gets injured all of the time. There's one other thing I want to point out to you guys, and maybe it's kind of hard to see here, and it's the smart passes. Um, Gary and Yorgos Masuras are not really known for breaking down defenses like like making those cutting balls to break down defenses and i know i mentioned that sergi canos is not when he's in the final third it's not so much his vision uh that we're really valuing because he plays more what's in front of him but when he's lying deeper he does have this tendency to make these great long balls and we i saw it a few times in the tape not only as a wing back but as a winger too so uh another added upside that he has that you could say Yorgos Masuras and Gary Rodriguez do not. Uh, so just something very interesting to see there. And regarding the defensive characteristics, so 
as a winger, something that's valued by all of our coaches is tracking back. Yorgos Masuras, we know, tracks back. Even Gary can track back once in a while uh, when he's not injured and when he's healthy. Uh, looking at looking at Sergi here, he definitely tracks back. The guy's got effort all up and down the park. Uh, defensive duel-wise, you know, Gary presses, but he's not really that much of a ball winner. Masuras is, that's what is more valuable about Masuras is the his effort and his characteristics, pressing the ball, trying to get the ball back. Sergi is a step up on that. Even interceptions wise, where I told you guys, he's not reading, reading passes is not necessarily a strong shoot. It's more creating the problems that then get mopped up later. He's still outperforming Masuras and, and Gary Rodriguez when it comes to possession, possession adjusted interceptions, uh, incredible stuff. And then clearances and aerial duels. Uh, this isn't going, he's not something we really care too much about the, the aerials one. I already told you guys he's not so good in the air. Masuras, this shouldn't surprise any of you guys. Masuras is a, a dog when it comes to the defensive end of the ball. So the the data here is pretty good uh, regarding, regarding Sergi Canos. I mean, he's got a little bit of everything, and at the very least, he appears to be an improvement on what's already there. So what's my verdict with this player? I think that this is going to be a really good addition for this club in the next six months for this title push. There's a very interesting trend that we've seen with the winter transfers. Uh, the winter transfers that we've made, all transfers, which so far I've been positive on. Uh, this is, of course, before I've done any of the research for the following deep, the deep dive, but for the last player that we signed, the last winger. But Rodine and Ramon, regardless of the fact that one may be a project player, are fighters. You guys have seen when they're on the pitch how aggressive they are. Rodine, Ramon, when he's on the pitch. These guys are fighters. I'm bringing up Holebas again. He said this team didn't have a lot of fighters, and we are bringing in fighters. Well, guess what, guys? Sergi Canos is a fighter also. And looking, comparing how he's done or comparing his stats when he's at his peak, when he has been at his peak compared to our other wingers, he is a step above both of them above both Gary Rodriguez, above both Yorgos Masuras as well. There is some risk, though, because it's not like we're getting this player in top form. He was injured, and he had he wasn't used much this season, less than 100 minutes of, of time on the field this season. So we don't know what kind of shape we're really getting him in, which is a concern. But it doesn't worry me a lot because of the player's mentality. A player with the mentality that this guy has, that David Fuster mentality, is going to come back faster than somebody that's that doesn't have that winner-take-all mentality. I am more inclined to throw my hat in the ring with this guy because of the type of player that he is. I don't care if he isn't the fanciest. And it was the same with David Fuster. I, don't, I would have loved to have a team with 11 Fusters on the team. That mentality... They're running, they're pressing, going all over the place. They're never say never, never say die attitude. I would take a team of 11 like that. No step overs, no fancy footwork. That's fine by me. I'll take that effort. I'll take the soldier every day of the week. This guy is a soldier. I'm not concerned overly that maybe he has been out of the plans at Brentford. He wasn't used much. He hasn't played much first team football. This guy looks like he has the mentality to get past that. The passion. If he if he comes here, falls in love with this club, takes it on as one of his own, and wears the badge on in his heart, on his heart like Fuster did, he's going to be huge for us. If he can stay healthy, this is going to be a great signing, just like Rodine. I'm excited to see him. You guys should be excited to see him. We need a fighter like this. And we hope that he brings that fighter instinct to all of the games with us. Don't expect him to play in this upcoming game against Bauk. I think it's too soon. But don't be surprised if you see him after that game in those following matches. Uh, you can't get enough of players like this, especially when we're starved for width. We need a guy that's going to be just like this, that's going to be running, gunning, making things maybe not making things happen out of out of nothing per se but somebody that's going to be running and making things happen for us and really being a positive impact for his team if he's as good in the locker room as we've been told from the interview th this signing is full speed ahead 
This is the type of signing we've needed, and it's about time that we got him. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, the deep dive. Uh, again, for those of you, if you enjoyed what you saw here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Another deep dive is coming, and then the summer is going to be coming up in a few months as well. We'll do many more deep dives then. We have plenty of content coming for you guys. We have more interviews coming. We have, of course, in a couple months or a couple months, in a few months, we'll have another award show. Those are always very fun. We do a lot of great things. And if you want to join us for the ride, like this video, like every video you see of us, and subscribe. Build up the community. Help us make everything bigger. Help us continue to give you guys the best content that we can. Continue to engage with us because you guys give us the energy to keep going. We're here because of you. Without you, this channel doesn't happen. So thank you, everybody, for listening. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive. I hope you found it informative. And always, if you guys have any questions, DM me. I never have any problem answering you guys. I love, I love comparing notes especially from the audience that comes with me almost every week now, comparing notes about players, discussing things, tactics. I love it. I love every second of it. So continue to engage with us. Let me know if you have any other questions, any other comments regarding this. And until next time, this is Gate 7 International by the fans for the fans. Oh,